Hello, and welcome to Introduction to Statistics, Think and Do. This is a intro stats book, and what makes it unique, there's plenty of intro stats books out there, and the content is fairly standard. And what, what makes this a unique version is that it is a textbook slash overhead slide slash um, workbook. And so the way it's set up is, you know, on each page there's some information usually presented in, say, bullet point. You know, so it's, it's good for overhead slides and it's fairly terse and to the point. And then underneath it, underneath this theoretical content, this information, this how-to, maybe there's some formulas or, um, uh, you know, summary of how you would go about conducting something. There's usually an example that's completed, followed by another example, and then followed by a your turn, and then maybe another one. And so the reason this is called think and do, right, is because of these your turns, right? So there's some room in here for you to actually do the work right in class or right while you're reading the book. And so it flows nicely for presentation or, or while you're reading it. So. You, you immediately get to start doing some of the um, some of the the statistics in addition to learning about it and thinking about it. Now the problem with this is that if you miss your class and you don't have a chance to do these, or if say your teacher doesn't cover or have enough time to to cover all of the your turns, what you're stuck with is is some empty space, and you may or may not know how to get started. And even if you do know how to get started and think you have a done a pretty good job at the your turns you, there's no answers there so one of the primary purposes of, of these videos is to give you an opportunity to check out the your turn answers and make sure you did them correctly I will also go over to a certain extent you know some of the presentation material and we'll go over the examples that are in detail but I'll, I'll slow things down and definitely go over in detail the your turn problems right um, so Introduction to Statistics, Think and Do, also known as the Pineapple Book, because there's a pineapple on the cover, of course. Uh, okay, some preliminary information. Content is a fairly standard menu of statistical topics. Introduction, descriptive. The descriptive, that's um, mean, median, mode, tables and graphics, some probability, some more probability. And then inferential statistics, various tests and um, methods. That's in 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They're all various methods involved in inferential statistics. And then here you get some, uh, some solutions. Unfortunately, there are no solutions to the your turn examples, but that's what we're here for now. So in, in the process of learning all these different methods and things we do with data, you know, we get the mean, the mean, the, the median, the mode. How do you find these things? How do you construct a confidence interval. These are all things that you do with data and they're um, like all intro stats books there's not all, as much emphasis placed on getting the data and if you have a class project for this course you're taking there's a very good chance um, that you do. I, plenty of classes don't have it but what you'll find very quickly is that often the most difficult part of any statistical study is getting the data it's, you know, it may not be theoretically complex, but it's a lot of labor and there's correct ways and incorrect ways to do it. And it just, it takes time. It's a lot of work. And so what I do on this first page, I usually do this in class and we discuss various ones, is at least appreciate um, the work that, that is required to go into getting um, the various facts and figures and statistics. And so I'll start with the first one. We'll just do a couple here. Even in class, we only do a few. But I'll start with this one here because it's about a pineapple. And there's a pineapple on the cover. That's the level of sophistication you get here. Um, the average pineapple plant is 3.47 feet tall. Now, what I didn't know is that pineapples grow on plants. One plant, one pineapple. Uh, that's the way it goes. I thought pineapples grew on trees. I thought there was one tree and a bunch of pineapples, but uh, in fact, that's not how it goes. And if you knew that um, pineapples grew in plants, great. But if you didn't, like me, um, 
well, I suppose, uh, uh, I suppose the learning has already begun. So, uh, one other thing I take, I take a little bit of issue with this statement because it seems awfully accurate. The average pineapple plant is 3.4. That's awfully accurate. 3.47. Is that all pineapple plants? Because if that claim is about all pineapple plants, that's pretty hard to believe that you got that accurate. What would make this statement a lot more believable is if they said about. Suddenly I don't have trouble believing that. The average pineapple plant is about 3.47 feet tall. Um, you know, first off, why would anybody really lie about that? And uh, second off, using the word about, I, I recognize that you probably didn't measure every single pineapple plant. In fact, I know you didn't. That's impossible to do. So you took a sample, you got 3.47 as the average from that sample, and then you step away and you say, all right, well, then I guess for all pineapples, it's probably about the same. And that's believable, but a lot of people don't like putting about in there because they think, oh, that makes that makes me sound less certain of myself. And and a lot of people confuse certainty with accuracy. And they're not the same. And in fact, they're, they work in opposite directions. For example, if you look at number seven here, the proportion of people who can roll their tongue ranges from 65 to 81 percent. Here you are given a range of values, right? Because you're given a range, I have a lot of confidence in that statement. I'm pretty certain it's true. I don't even really need to check it because you have a range there. My confidence in that statement is strong. It's not as accurate, and some people would uh, misinterpret this lack of accuracy for a lack of certainty, but it, but it actually goes in the opposite direction. The less accurate it is, the actual more certainty you have. Um, and we'll actually get more into this topic in Chapter 7. All right, so I've got some thunder going on out here. I hope that doesn't interfere with the audio. Uh, but we'll wrap this up. Well, let's do two more. There's these two to appreciate the difference in data. Married men live on average 10 years longer than unmarried men. Right-handed people live on average 9 years longer than left-handed people. This one right here about married men, I believe that. I have confidence in that. And not because I know anything about married men or unmarried men or at the age of death. Um... But it wouldn't be that hard to check. It wouldn't be that hard to do in the first place. You wouldn't even need to go to hospital or get death records. You could just look in the obituaries. It might take a few hours, but after a while, you'd have, say, 50 um, dead married men and 50 dead unmarried men, and you'd compare the average age of death, and hopefully you'd get about 10, right? And if not, you might have reason to question that statement for sure. On the other hand, right-handed and left-handed people, like getting that information is going to be hard. It's not on death certificates. Um, you don't have to record it anywhere, really. And if you were to conduct that study, you certainly couldn't just follow 50 lefties and 50 righties and see when they die. There's a very good chance they'll outlive you and your study will uh, die along with you. So you have to actually somehow obtain left-handed right-handedness from dead. It's hard. You know, you can immediately start imagining how difficult that is to obtain that information. And it's even that much more difficult for me to check, you know, how much effort am I willing to put in to determining whether or not that is true. So, you know, verifying this is way more work than it's worth. And so I, I, I'm, when I first hear a statement like this, I think, oh, I, I question that only because it's got to be really hard to get that data. You know, getting the data is the difficult part here. Um, and when the data is really hard to come by and somebody makes a quote like that, I'm, I'm less likely to believe them. Um, so there, that, that's, that's the elephant in the room, getting the data. You know, for example, do one more. Girls have more taste buds than boys. Um, I'll believe it. Or I don't know. Who knows? But you can bet that that took a lot of work, right? You're counting taste buds here. Now, maybe they can take a picture, I hope, for the sake of those involved in the study, at least, they were able to take a picture and count the taste buds later. And maybe if you could do it digitally, then then the, I, I would certainly be more willing to believe it, because then it's actually a lot easier to obtain the data. And I'm sure somebody would be interested in knowing that information, or maybe somebody did it as a project in college. I don't know. But in any case, getting the data is certainly a lot more difficult than coming to this result. And that's usually the case with a statistical Test. Getting the data is where all the labor is. And so, um, 
that's sort of what's going on in the background of all this stuff as we proceed through the chapters. And speaking of which, I will stop here and catch up with you again on chapter 1.1 where we do some introduction to some terms and um, definitions. Thanks. Bye.